Hey, what's going on, Shrimp Keepers? It is Wednesday, which just means an update Wednesday. And uh, we had a crazy week. Um, we were really blessed this week. We got a ton of orders. We got about, I want to say, like 35 orders that went out, which is, I mean, that's huge for us. So it was a great week for us, but it was crazy. So every morning I was getting up at 6.30 to send things to the post office. And so I want to show you guys the aftermath of all the crazy shipping. The sad news is, is um, when we shipped Monday night, we got some orders out Monday night. And they were in a rush to get them on the truck and all that thing. And so far we got back two emails saying that bags were broke. So I'm hoping that it's only two. Um, one, luckily all the shrimp still survived because we put them in a second bag just to make sure. And uh, the first order, I think five out of the 15 PRLs, or 10 out of the 15 PRLs died. So that's never good. So it sucks when that happens, but that's um, that's the nature of the beach when you uh, ship through postal service. You know, they, some of them handle it pretty poorly and others handle it really well. So... It is what it is, but I'm going to show you guys the aftermath of the shipping. I'm going to show you the new plans that I have for this building. And also, we just looked at another building that we're thinking about moving to. Um, just because uh, the guy that owns the building that we're in currently, um, he's kind of going around the bush about selling this place. And so, uh, so we're just looking at other options just to be safe. And this one would have a retail location, so it's super awesome. Um, I would have taken a video there, but it was like super dark, and uh, you wouldn't have been able to see anything. But anyway, so that's really exciting. So there's a lot of great things going on right now. Um, the shrimp order hopefully should be coming in. Um, we're still hoping for end of February, beginning of March, as long as the import order comes through. And so there's a lot of really good stuff going on right now. But let's get into Update Wednesday. So first, we're going to take a look at the, the upfront, and then I'll show you the, the warehouse, uh, the shrimp room. And uh, kind of give you guys an overall update of everything that's going on. So stay tuned. So first you come in and this is what you see. I mean, it is an absolute disaster. But it's good and it, for a number of reasons. And um, the re reason one is, check this out. So ignore all the crazy mess. Because this is, this is what it looks like after War Day, which is shipping. Um, right here, let me focus if it will. Uh, we moved all of our inventory back into this um, room that wasn't being utilized before. I put in this old shelf that we had laying around. And so all of our merchandise is right here, which is, is so convenient. We got all the Indian anomalies down at the bottom. I don't know why the camera is being weird at focusing. So everything is so much more organized now. So when we're shipping, literally what we do is at least this is what we did. Um, I'd have all the orders right here. And then we'd lay them out on the couch. And then put all the stuff for those orders and then I would package them up and then Amanda would continue to lay them out. And uh, we went through a whole bunch of insulation as you can see. That's a full roll gone. Pretty much gone. Um, all the boxes and junk. But here's what we're planning. Is this room right now, again, is a mess because shipping was nuts this week. Is we are actually... Oh, I can tell you about the kiln too. That's super exciting. Um, anyway, this is going to have a long table in here. And this is going to be our shipping room. And then we're actually going to have our hot knife right here. And our hot knife is what we make these insulation inserts with. And we put these into the USPS boxes and line it completely and make it fit really good. And here's like an example of one of the boxes we would use. So it's all lined on the outside. We use insulation in the middle. And then we use this on top. And so it just really insulates the package. And so this is going to be the shipping room. It's going to get real organized this week. Um, that's the plan at least is to really get this room shaped and ready to go and uh, the kiln the kiln's actually a really cool story so I was working at a guy's doing electrical and he had this in his basement his wife was super into pottery and uh, making clay uh, sculptures and stuff like that so I was working next to that and I'd never seen a kiln before so I was like hey what is that he's like it's a kiln it's for baking clay pottery and turn it into you know hard uh, clay pots or whatever and I thought it was so cool because so many people make pleco caves so I'm like, and this thing is huge. Like this is literally probably um, four feet off the ground, I would say. So about the the height of a 55 gallon standing up on its side. And uh, and so I was like, well, would you be interested in getting rid of it? And he's like, yeah, it hasn't, you know, we haven't ran in a while. And, you know, it was my wife's and he told me the whole story about his wife and, you know, the sadness of her passing away. And uh, he loved the passion that I had for this to potentially make uh, pleco caves and different things like that. Like I just thought it was cool. And so he really resonated with that. So he, he gave me like an absolute killer price. Like, for example, I think something like this brand new would be like 
two or three thousand dollars, like something ridiculous. Um, and I think I got this one for like fifty bucks. Like he he didn't even want the money. He was just like, take it, take it. And I'm just like, I couldn't. Like I had fifty dollars in my wallet and I gave it to him. So it was super cool of him. Um, ton of these posters. Let's just change the pace. These are the um, shrimp posters from the competition this year. I'm gonna get a lot of them framed and and hang them up at if we do a store or something like that. Or I'm sure I'll raffle them off at some point. But that's that. Um, I, yeah, so I did all my printing right here for the shipping labels. Got my paper cutter over here. You can see you'll see the, all the paper. Got my um, scale. So this is where we weigh the packages and get them all ready. And so basically what I was doing is simplifying the process. So before we would package up way out there and bring them in here and label them in here. And it was just not a good system. So now we're finally getting it down. And so eventually what we're going to do is I'm taking this puppy home. That's going to be when I shoot from my desk at home, this one's going to go right behind me and I'm going to set up real nice. I'm debating on what I'm going to use it for, um, but I think I know. And so this place is getting a huge facelift soon. Check these out. My wife will kill me if I don't show. Um, she got these, uh, they're Dalmatian Mollies and uh, this one doesn't look happy. I don't know if he's just because lights just turned on or if he's just not happy. But anyway, she's super jacked about these. We got them for two bucks and there was like 24 of them. No one wanted them at the fish club meeting, so we got them. And then she got some killifish in here, which we overfed. I'm just realizing, I don't know where they're at. There, there's one. Oh, there's the another one. Anyway, terrible video of them. <laughs> and then the cherry shrimp. This tank's doing really good. And uh... Yeah, everything's going great out here as far as tanks go. Uh, it just needs organized after shipping. And then you walk back here, and we're just starting to get these tanks cleaned. Um, we took a bunch of the shrimp. Uh, the lights. Sorry, that flicker, if you guys don't know, that's the LED lights. If they're not turned up all the way, they flicker. Uh, at least in the camera. We cleaned out most of these tanks, so all the fish are taken out of these ones. Most of them out of here, all of them out of here. Um... I don't think we touched this tank and then some shrimp left over but as I said in past videos we are cleaning this section out we're getting you know selling off all the fish rehoming them whatever we have to do uh, last week we took them to the fish club meeting and gave them some good homes there and um, so this room will be for um, wholesale more or less so when we get our import order in we're gonna quarantine the shrimp for about a month in here and after we feel confident that they're healthy enough to survive shipping and healthy enough to survive, um, oh, that's nice. It doesn't do it anymore. But healthy enough to survive shipping and all those things, then we're actually going to um, start selling them for wholesale. And potentially on the website, but that's still up in the air. That's a whole different video that we need to get into is whether or not we're going to list uh, imported shrimp on the website as their own item because they're they're definitely cheaper but you know there's parasite risk there's disease risk there's a lot of risks that come with imported shrimp so we'll just talk about that at a later time this tank's doing spectacular this is the romanian moss um doesn't look as good in the video but in real life it looks awesome and then we have some epistogram in here um i don't remember what kind but they got all their little huts in there that are buried like let me see if it'll focus and uh and these guys do awesome and this is who I'm thinking about taking home to the 55 gallon. This is Gio, he's a tilapia. And if you guys haven't heard the story about him, uh, I don't even know what video it's in. But uh, he basically came from my friend's house who um, was murdered. And somehow he got down into the drainage pipe of the fish room and was living in there for like a month. And then we found him when we were taking the, the drainage pipes apart. And uh, so we brought him here right away. He was real skinny. Now he's, you know, he's fattening up a little bit. And uh, and here he is. So he's grown up a lot. He's probably at least quadrupled in size. And so he deserves a bigger home instead of this 20 long. Um, I could put him down in one of these ponds, which I was debating on. So that's up in the air right now. But um, let me pause the video and we'll go check out what's going on. Whoa. We'll go check out what's going on in the shrimp room. All right, so we're back in the warehouse, or back in the shrimp room, and uh, we got Emma with us today. Say hi, Emma. She's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, so this room is really coming along. Uh, Jeff came in and helped us last week, which was my intern, and really helped us get uh, some of the tanks turned over. 
Here's a buried um, tiger. Which is awesome. And we actually have a buried super tiger, which is really, really cool. Um, let me go see if he's out or she's out. And then um, there's some bad news in here as well, which we'll talk about that too. Is she on top of the wood? Let me see. Um, yeah, I don't see her now. But she's a huge buried super tiger, which is great because we only have about 10 left. And so, um, so it'll be good to get her in here. Or get the babies going at least. She and so. Yeah. All right, so I paused the video and found her. She is awesome. Um, I don't know how many babies she has, but she's been holding for about three weeks now. So uh, really any day now she could be releasing. But I, I guess that she probably has 30 eggs. Um, she's pretty she's pretty buried to be honest which buried means pregnant for anyone that doesn't know because I know I don't specify all the time so that's super awesome and uh, and hopefully that they'll continue to breed and the babies will do good and then we will be able to um, sell them to you guys and repopulate them but the bad news is this tank this is my original royal blue tank that still has a lot of shrimp in it. Um, there's a there's a fair amount of babies. You can see them on the leaf. Hopefully you can see them. But anyway, we moved this tank, and um, they the older ones didn't like the move. Which obviously older shrimp don't acclimate well. Which is why most people sell juvenile shrimp. Um, but we've lost. I think in the last three days we've lost like 12 shrimp out of here, and so that's awful. Um, so I really wasn't happy about that. So one thing that we've been doing is um, I, I have some shrimp that I sold. Like I sold a ton of Royal Blues in the past year or two. And so we got really, we're not low, I would say we're not low on numbers, but we don't have as many as I would like. And so what I'm doing is I'm starting to reach out to some of the people that we sold them to and, uh, and buy some back. And uh, just to reintroduce uh, lines to them and add some genetics to the tanks and different things like that. Because we know where those shrimp came from. They, they came from our lines. And so we want to get that, you know, nice royal blue line back and, and really populate it. Instead of just having, you know, like this tank's good. Like this tank has a bunch of them. But um, there's a couple of them that I want to get more shrimp into. And I could just let the babies grow up, but I, I don't know. It's one of those things. Like there's... There's a decent amount of babies in this tank. But anyway, so we'll move on from there. Um, the Crystal Blacks have babies, which again, you're gonna get the line. But check this out. And some of them are red, but you know, that's to be expected because they were mixed a couple times and different stuff like that. And then, ooh, let me turn, let me just turn this off because I want to show you this guy. Check out this guy. Is it is he pretty or what? Um, I've never had pintos before just because they're they're pretty expensive. But this is something that would this is this is like what a pinto would look like, or at least our definition of pinto here in the United States. So it's cool that this one was, you know, they bred in this aquarium and and that one somehow survived despite our neglect and, and is living. So it's kind of cool to see that. And again, we'll go back over here. I'm really pumped that these guys are finally breeding. And I don't know how many babies are in here, but I would estimate probably only 15 to 20 so far, but there's still three buried females. You can see there's one in the corner. And so it's really good. It, it's good to see progress. And you guys know, I just did a video on the Tangerine Tigers. Um, hopefully you guys like that video. I did a voiceover. And it's, um, it's fun to just get back to, you know, breeding and, and enjoying. Let me turn this around. Hopefully you guys can see me. But it's fun, really. And, and we're just trying to have fun. I'm trying to really enjoy it instead of making it a business. Because um, at the end of the day, it is a hobby. And it's, it's what I love. So we're, uh, we're really breeding some stuff. The import order is going to be so much fun. It's going to be so cool to see how this whole process goes and have you guys uh, follow along in the process with that. And, uh, and Above all else, thank you guys. Thank you for subscribing, thank you for watching, and thank you for being a part of this journey for me. I really appreciate it, and I couldn't have done it without you guys. So much love from me, 
And uh, I hope you guys are making it a great week. Happy hump day and enjoy the rest of your week. And I'll talk to you guys either on Friday or Saturday with a Shrimp Saturday video. Later.